Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking at flight controllers and in particular I'm looking at this, the Naze or Naze Mini. And uh, it's just a small sort of whittled down version of this, the Naze 32. I'm going to call it a Naze. I don't know how you pronounce it. People call it different things. So it's spelt Naze, so I'm calling it a Naze. And not to be confused of course with the NASA, which is uh, a well-known flight controller. This is the NASA Lite. These have been around for a long time. Some love them, some hate them. But um, I included that for the reason that you can see how big these things are or how small they are. And here is another good old favourite, the KK2 board with its built-in LCD screen that for a long time has been sort of the the backbone of DIY multi-rotors because these things have been relatively easy to tune. The onboard LCD means you can adjust PI values really easily and see what's happening and set it up without having to plug in a computer because uh, do you really want to carry a computer to the flying field? Not many people do. So there we go, those are, uh, are just some of the popular fly controllers but as you can see the little Naze, third, or Naze mini board is so damn small. In fact, if we get rid of these things and just compare it just even to the original Naze board, you'll see that it's it's about half the size. It's it's tiny, tiny, tiny little thing. So can they really get sort of full-size flight controller performance out of a board this small? Um, well, let's take a closer look and find out. Well, here are the two boards side by side. I'm going to show you this. There's a lot of components that are common to both. You've got your 32-bit ARM processor here on both these particular boards. You've got a six degrees of freedom. That's a three gyros, three accelerometers and this little chip here. And that chip also exists on this board. I think it's probably this one. I oh, know, probably this one. I can't tell because I got my glasses off to do this video. It has a barometer. See, this is a barometer up here. This little metal can with a hole in it is the barometer. And the full naze afro board also has a barometer. So yeah, the full naze board has a compass which this one doesn't have, so it doesn't have a compass on the mini board. And something else you'll notice that's really, really important to a lot of people is this has got a micro SD board, uh, a connector I should say. See that micro SD, you can plug in your micro SD cable then plug that into your computer to adjust the programming. There's no such thing on this board. It doesn't have any USB connector on this at all. And when you think about it, that's probably not, so bad, not such a bad thing because this is just extra weight and components and stuff you pay for and carry around you're only going to use it if you're adjusting the controller through the computer, so is it really necessary to make that a built-in part of the board? Probably not, so they haven't done in this. Now the other thing you'll notice on this one is that there are a row of connectors along here which are for independent channel inputs. So you can take any old receiver with four or five, six, seven, eight channels of output and connect it up to the full-blown NAS32 board through the pins along the side. In fact, if we turn this over, you see there's other pins on the bottom for the rest of the channels. There they are. So any receiver will work with the NAS32 board, whether it's the Acro board, which is just the one without the compass and barometer, or whether it is the Afro board, which has the compass and barometer built in, or the Funfly board, I think they call it. Now on this board over here, of course, let me just move that out of the way. All we've got is our ESC outputs down here and some pins here for programming via the computer. Now you can plug this into a USB port but not directly. We need a cable. I'll show you more about that in a moment. If we turn this over we can see that all these connectors here have writing against them and move it into shot because I'm looking through the thing. So we've got S1 through S4 and we've got throttle and PPM but there's no independent inputs for your channel. So you can't just take a regular eight channel receiver and use the NAS mini board. You have to have a receiver that does CPPM, which means all the channels come out on a single servo connector and they connect up to this PPM input here. So if, you're, if your radio gear doesn't support CPPM, forget about using this board. It's just not going to work unless you get a separate PPM to CPPM converter, which is just extra weight. You might as well in that case just go and buy that board and use a full blown NAS board because that'll work much better. But here we go. So when you buy your little NAS mini board, this is what it looks like. And as you can see, there's no there's no pins on there, you can't plug anything into it because there's just holes where the pins should be. So the first thing you've got to do is solder in the connectors, the little pin headers like this that enable you to plug things in. Over here we've got pins to plug in to our computer and here we've got pins which connect to our ESCs and to our receiver through the PPM input, the CPPM input, which is just a normal servo connector, which usually goes to channel one of your receiver when it's in CPPM mode. Simple as, so they're just soldered. You know, I've done soldering before, I've shown you how to solder these pin headers before, no real problems. Uh, when I bought mine, I didn't get any pin headers with it, but I've got plenty laying around, so I just put them in. If you're not good at soldering, you might not want to go 
for this, but then again, the Naze 32 also requires you to do some soldering, although some vendors will solder the pins in for you and charge you a small extra fee. But okay, let's assume we've put all the pin headers in our board, because what I'm going to show you now is how to set this up. Of course, the first step is to install it in your multi-rotor. I've got one installed in this MXP230 multi-rotor. As you can see, it's sitting right down inside there. You've seen this in perhaps some of my other videos, the review of the MXP230. There's the board sitting inside. You can see I've got the ESCs plugged in, a lead off to my receiver, and on the other side, those pins, which we're going to use to connect to the computer, have nothing on them yet because we're not connected to the computer. So now I'm going to show you what we need to do to connect that board to our PC. And to do that, you're going to need an adapter. This is called an FTDI adapter. Don't ask me what that stands for. It's not important. You just need an FTDI adapter. And that has a USB connector like that on one end. And on the other end, this one has a regular little servo connector, which will plug into those pins on our board. This one I've modified a bit. It has an extra wire. Don't worry about it. You don't need it. This is actually a free sky product, this one. This is their FDD Lite version 2, I think. I'll get a close-up of that for you. There it is. It's a free Sky product. I'll put a link in the description of this video if you want to buy one and use it so you can follow exactly what I'm doing to the letter. Otherwise, you can pick up these FTDI adapters, not FDDI, but FTDI adapters from just about anywhere. eBay has heaps of them. And basically, as I say, they have a USB connection on one end that plugs into your computer. And on the other end, they have three or four wires that come out. There's a ground wire, a receive data wire, a transmit data wire, and sometimes there is a 5 volt or a 3 volt wire. You don't have to worry about that voltage wire. All we want is ground, TX, and RX. And they, will, they are the signals that will connect up to our NAS mini board so that we can adjust all the parameters from our laptop or our desktop computer. And here's how that connector plugs into the little mini board. So you can see, if you're using the FreeSky one, the yellow wire there is to the back. The black wire is to the front next to the pin that's not used, which can have the 5 volt connection applied to it. We're not going to use that 5 volt connection because we're going to power our board from the LiPo on the multi-rotor once we've got it installed. But that's the way you'll plug the lead of the FreeSky FDD Lite Revision 2 into your Naze mini board. Don't get it around the wrong way, it will not work. If you're using a regular FTDI board that isn't the FreeSky one, then what you, all you need to know is that the ground has to go to ground, the TX on this board goes to the RX on your FTD board, and the RX on this board goes to the TX on your FTDI board. So you swap over, it should be crossed over RX to TX, TX to RX, and then it should all work just fine and dandy. And there's the cable plugged into the board now that it's on the MXP230. You can see it just plugs in there, just as I said before, the yellow wire to the back and the spare pin in the front, because all the ESC connectors are at the front here. So this is the front, that's the color arrangement. You can see yellow, red, black, yellow to the back. Now also in our mini quad, of course, we've got a receiver that's been bound to our transmitter and wired up. So everything is all wired up, it should all go. There should be power to the motors, should be power to the receiver through the ESCs. And of course the receiver then powers, or the, uh, the ESCs then power the Naze mini board that's inside. So when we turn it on, it should all light up and make noises. But, but, and this is very important, I can't emphasize this too much, as you can tell by the cuts on my hands, take the propellers off. Please take the propellers off, otherwise you are going to have to have a wet cloth nearby and lots of bandages to mop up the blood. Just trust me on this, I know what I'm talking about. So never, never try and tune your multi-rotor with the props on. Now of course you're going to need the transmitter that you use with this setup. I've got the Hitech Aurora A9X review coming up shortly and I've already set up the very basics on this transmitter. There we go, transmit. Oh, throttle warning, here we go. So I've set this up basically, created a model called the MXP230 and it's really, there's no mixing, there's nothing, it's just basically um, default four-channel setup. I've also set up a switch to operate on channel 5. It's this switch here, it's a three-position switch, and I've set it up just so that we have full movement one way, mid-position, full movement the other way. You'll need to have at least one channel set up like this. This will control the mode in which your Naze 32 or your Naze mini board operates, so it's important that you do that. So there we go. Now, of course, we just take our mini quad and we plug a battery in to make it go. Here we go. 
you notice there's beeps and lights come on inside, which means there's people behind the powers getting to the right places. That's all good. So the next step is to go to our computer and load up the necessary software. Now I've got a really old computer. This laptop actually it runs on coal, so and I've only got one bucket of coal here, so hopefully I can get it done before all the steam pressure drops. But it is a really old computer, and which is good because you don't need a flash computer to use the software that sets up this board. What you do need is Google Chrome should be installed. And once you've installed Google Chrome, you need to install some drivers, which are for the little FTDI adapter. And I'll give you some links in the description to where you can get these things. And you also need to install the Base Flight app, and I'll give you a link to that as well. So you install all that stuff, then all you've got to do really is start up Google Chrome, which hopefully won't take long on this old machine, but we'll just wait while the wheels turn ever so slowly. Yes, it's amazing what you can do with, oh, there we go, 512 megabytes of RAM. And once you've loaded up Google Chrome, then you go to the apps up here, and if your base flight is installed properly, there we go, there it is down here. So you click on base flight, and that will load up the screen that we use to set up the Naze Mini and the Naze 32. What I'm going to show you now applies to both boards, both the Naze Mini and the Naze 32. So if you just come to learn how to set up your Naze 32, well, you've come to the right place because you'll find out about it here. I'll just adjust the framing on the camera here so we can see more stuff. And I'll show you some of the important things you need to know right from the get-go. There's a red button up here called Connect, and beside that button there's also a little checkbox called Auto Connect. I leave the Auto Connect on. All that means is when I plug in my little FTDI thingy into the side of the computer, it's going to automatically connect to the, to the software and we'll be able to start configuring straight away. Okay, so I'm going to plug that in now, and when I plug it in, you should see this little red button change to green, and the text on it will change to Disconnect, because it changes from a Connect button to a Disconnect button. Let's plug that in. Heard a little noise, and with luck, bingo, there we are. It has now changed into the Disconnect button, and we're all ready to go. Now, you see a little box here. This little box is actually the output of the gyros and accelerometers on our mini quad. Now, if I get the mini quad and I tilt it, or rotate it, or tip it backwards and forwards, you can see that the box moves as well. So it's a good test that everything's working okay. The gyros are working, accelerometers are working, and the connection between the board and the computer is also working. Woohoo! That's what we wanted to see. Now I'm going to show you what we need to do. We need to go over here and we need to click on this initial setup tab, which if we're not already on there, and go down to accelerometer, calibrate accelerometer. Make sure that your mini quad is sitting flat and level because this is where the accelerometers basically get their reference point from. So set your mini quad flat and level on a smooth surface, then click on accelerate, oh sorry, calibrate accelerometer. That'll just spend a couple of seconds and then bing, it's calibrated. That's all you need to do for that. But now we've got some other stuff to do. We've got to go, got to go over and set some values to tell our little naze board how our machine is set up. To do that, we go over to this thing called CLI over here. It's called Command Line Interface, and it's uh, called that because it lets you enter commands. How simple could that be? It's just like DOS, look, it's just like the old days with MS-DOS, because you get this big text window here. Down the bottom there's a command line, which is why it's called a Command Line Interface, of course. How simple is that? What we have to do now is type in a few commands. Just to show you what's involved, I'll show you how many commands you could type in by typing in D-U-M-P for dump, and that lists all the possible commands. And I'll just scroll back through those because there are a lot of them. Let's go back through some of these commands and see what's there. Look, whee, how about this, eh? Are you impressed yet? Are you scared? Are you petrified about all the stuff you're going to have to learn? Well, don't be because you don't really need to know about very much of that at all. Uh, fortunately, the software is so damn good and it's so well set up that there's only three or four things you really need to worry about, at least initially. And the first of those things is, down here, get down to my command line, and I'm going to set some of the features. Now, first of all, because this is a Naze mini board, it only works with CPPM. There are no separate inputs for each channel, so I have to tell the board it's going to be operating in CPPM mode. So I type in feature, and then a space, PPM, and hit enter. Oh, I typed it wrong. See, it's clever, isn't it? I typed OOM because my fingers went on the right place. So feature, PPM. Here we go. Right, now it received the right command that says feature PPM enabled PPM. So now the PPM system is enabled. It's looking at the input for a CPPM signal from our receiver. Woohoo, that's all good. Next thing we've got to do is something you don't have to do, but I like to do it because when the Naze boards come out of the box. They're set up so that when you arm them, 
the motors start spinning. They don't spin fast, they spin quite slowly, but I don't think that's a very safe feature because if you arm it and your finger's in the way, whoop, there goes your finger, or well, it doesn't, but it's nasty, it gives you a cut. Gotta get those rags and bandages out again. So I turn that off. So you type in feature, motor, and then an underscore, not a dash, an underscore, stop. Here we go. That turns off the automatic running of the motors when it's armed. It's, a, it's an optional choice, but I like to make that choice. Next thing is because we're using the NAS mini board, we want to make sure that our ESC outputs are connected to the pins labeled S1 through S4. Now, if you don't do that, you've got to use some of the other pins. It gets a bit messy and clunky, so uh, you don't have to worry about this on the full NAS32 board, but if you have the NAS mini board, I want you to type in feature, uh, I didn't spell that right, feature, um, servo, underscore, tilt. There we go. That now means that the outputs for the various ESCs will go to S1 through S4. Simple as that. So that's all we really need to type in to get this board going. It is that simple. Next thing to do, we've got to save it. We can actually save it by typing in save. And it says we're saving, there you go. Or you can actually just go to another tab. I'm gonna to go to another tab because we've got another step to do now, which is quite important. I'll go to the receiver tab. And notice it takes a little while. I click the button, but it's saving rebooting and there we go we're at the receiver tab now and now i want to show you some of the stuff that you have to set up because this is where we need to inform the boards about something now we've got center positions on our sticks and you know from time to time when you set a model up you've got to adjust the sub trims because some of the servos aren't quite centered well the naze board's pretty similar you've got to adjust your sub trims to make sure that the outputs from the receiver match what the naze board considers to be the center position and it calls the center position 1500. See this column of numbers here? These are the current servo outputs. So when I move a servo, you see one of the arms moves and the numbers, or the number at the end of that bar is also moving. And when I let go of the stick, that's the center position. Now, they should all be on 1500 with the sticks in the middle. 1500 or thereabouts. Now you're not gonna get it dead perfect, especially on some of the cheaper radios which have a lower resolution. But if you're anywhere from say 1497 to 1503, that's going to be close enough. So we've got pitch is okay, that's 1498. Your is okay, 1500. The auxiliary one channel, which is we're going to use later, that's channel five for switching modes, that's 1499. The throttle, of course, I don't have in the center position, but I'll raise it up here so that it is in, try and get it in the center position roughly. Ooh, it's actually hard to see on the screen here. It's very delicate because I'm trying to line it up with the little marks on the transmitter stick, but there we go. Yeah, 1500 for the throttle. So they're all pretty much centered, except roll is 1512. That's, eh, I'm not happy with that. That's too far out. So on my transmitter, let me put the old uh, A9 in here. Hopefully it'll focus and we can see what I'm doing. I'm going to press the sub trim. Here we go. And on the aileron channel, I'm going to change that. And I won't hold it in front of there, but you'll hear a beep as I change it. And I'm going to wind that number down. So watch the roll number here as I wind down the sub trim. You can see it coming down until I get it down to 1500 or thereabouts. There we go. I'm happy with 1499, sometimes 1500. So now I've set the center point. All the other channels, I'll do the same thing. If they were too far out, too far away from 1500, I would just adjust the sub trims until they all read as close to 1500 as I could get them. And that's the first stage, that's setting your midpoints. Now the next step is to set the endpoints because just like when you've got a fixed wing model of servos, you often need to adjust the endpoints of the servos to make sure they don't go too far or they are going far enough. And the same with the naze board, you've got to set the endpoints for it to work in the best possible way. The endpoints have to be pretty close to accurate and the naze considers the endpoints to be anywhere from 1000 at the bottom, I'll just use the, the pitch in this case, pitch, there we go, that's 1006, that's close enough. And at the other end, 2000 or near about. So that's 2001, that's probably close enough. Ideally it's 1000 at the bottom and 2000 at the top. And to get those on most radios, you adjust your endpoints. And if I use my roll, what have I got here? I've got, oh, 1051, that's not quite right. The other end, well, that's pretty good. That's 2000 on the roll at the top end, but at the bottom, yeah, 1050, that's, yeah, I want to change that. So in my, Transmitter here, let me go back to this thing here so you can see hopefully. I'll choose endpoint adjust. Can you see that? Endpoint adjust. And on my aileron, I'll be adjusting the endpoint here. And you watch the numbers change on here when I hold the stick over. So which way was it? It was this way. I'll just 
wind that up and hopefully you'll see this number what the, the 1051 should go down to a thousand as I adjust that figure you can hear the beeps and see the number changing well, 999 I'll just go back a bit here we go 1003 that's close enough so now I'm going from 1003 to 2000 perfect so you got to do that for each of the channels make sure the endpoints the bottom end is a thousand the top end is 2000 or very close to it and then you're all set up that's everything you need to do in terms of programming your transmitter to the board the board knows the center points it knows the endpoints woohoo we're nearly done so all we have to do now is set up that fifth channel for the flight modes and the NASE boards have three flight modes we have the angle mode we see here some of the flight modes there's two modes mentioned here angle mode which enable is self-leveling and it will limit the angle to which your craft can tilt so I think normally it's about 50 degrees or something once you reach 50 degrees no amount of extra stick input will make the craft tilt anymore so it's a really really safe mode perfect for learning because you're not going to get into too much trouble the other mode is horizon mode and horizon mode is like the angle mode except when you go past a certain point it will allow you to enable you to do flips because it changes from the self-leveling to the rate mode so there's no limit to the angle at which you can tilt your craft so you can do a full flip or a roll but when you've got the stick around the center part it's self-leveling it's like the best of both worlds I suppose you can do aerobatics and amaze your friends while not getting too scared yourself because you lose control of the model brilliant but okay how do we attach the two different modes or the three different modes to a switch and we've got as I mentioned earlier I set up a three position switch on the um, on the little high tech here where is it this one here and you can see when I flick the switch the bar on the screen moves simple as that so that's channel five all I have to do now is tick the box for the particular flight mode I want associated with the stick position now the default position for sticks is up so we'll make that the safe mode so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the position it's on now I'm going to make that the angle mode here we go so now when the switch is in this position the flight controller will be in angle mode the next position down which is this one I'm going to make that the horizon mode here we go and what about the rate mode well you don't see a rate mode listed on the screen there's no rate mode or acro mode as some controllers call it there's no acro mode down here so how are you going to select your acro mode well some of you have probably figured it out but if I go to the next position on the switch this one you'll probably see that um, it's neither angle mode nor horizon mode so it has to be rate mode it's the only one left it's a little bit cumbersome it'd be nice if they put the rate mode in there but no that's what they they've done it this way it works fine important point now do not forget this point absolutely essential save save your settings or when you go and reboot your controller it will have forgotten about the mode switch so now also you will see that when I flick my switch and I go to the mid position horizon mode is illuminated in green so we know we're in horizon mode next position angle mode is in green we know that's the angle mode and the other end of the switch neither angle nor horizon so it must be rate mode because that's all that's left simple as here we go that's set up our naze board it's really all we need to do to get started uh, at this point you can just disconnect it and fly the damn thing if you want to but there's some other stuff on here you might find really useful and we go to the servo motor outputs board uh, screen that tab has some really cool stuff on it now if I arm the board and by default arming is throttle right down I should just get out of the screen here by default throttle throttle right down where I've oh, made one throttle right down and rudder to the right that arms the board by default oh there you go and if I raise the throttle you can see here this is the signals being sent to the ESC's for each channel and the more throttle the more signal so we can see that's working really well now if I tilt the multi rotor notice how they change because they're trying to correct for the tilt and this is why we don't have propellers on children because right now we'd be cleaning up the blood if we left the props on but there we go so that enables you to see that the ESC's are all getting the right output and so if a, if a motor wasn't going you could see from this gosh there's something wrong the controller is saying go motor but it's not turning helps you with your fault finding and another really important thing is making sure you've got the right motor plugged into the right output on your board and how can you do that well that's pretty simple too over here we've got a little motor test notice which basically says read this and if you check this little box then we're not responsible for you severely injuring yourself because the motors will start up and if you check the little thing down here hopefully you can see this I'll check that box check all I have to do is go over here and pull up the slider and when I pull up the slider for a particular motor that motor will start 
you'll probably hear it, oops, you'll hear it, and see the corresponding line up here goes up. So the motor that's spinning now should be motor one. So you look at your quad and you make sure that is the right motor based on the motor layout information that comes with the instructions, which I will show you now. So here is the motor layout for a quadcopter with the nase boards. Um, this is the front, the front of the machine, so it faces that way, and the numbering is one, two, three, four. Simple as that. Just a footnote, in order for that to work, the slider to work, you have to disarm the controller, so you have to make sure the controller isn't armed or that won't work. And when you're finished, uncheck this box so you're not going to accidentally start up the motors. Oh. Now, I'll show you in another video how to calibrate your motors while they're installed and with the board, but if you've already calibrated, or sorry, calibrate the ESCs, if you've already calibrated them using other methods, you don't need to know that. It's been my experience that most of the ESCs these days come pretty damn close. I haven't actually had to calibrate any at all yet, but if you do need to, let me know. I'll do another video. I just don't want this video dragging on for hours and hours and hours, otherwise people get bored and fall asleep and then they could hurt themselves. So there you go, that's the basics. Now, so we've done that. Let's go back to the initial setup tab there and as you can see everything is looking fine at this stage we can disconnect from the computer by clicking on the little button up here which has gone green disconnect it turns red everything disappears our board's programmed we can unplug it from the computer get the little noise and we're really good to fly but uh, I'll unplug the machine we're really good to fly now now some of you will have noticed in the video I've, uh, you've just seen that I've got a video transmitter in here and I didn't have an antenna on it but I had this powered up. Oh my god what's going to happen? Well yes, you should always run your video transmitter with an antenna but on my quads I always have a separate power lead for the video transmitter so I can unplug it if I want to play around or just fly line of sight. So don't worry, I didn't have an antenna on here but I didn't burn this up because I didn't need to have an antenna on it. It wasn't powered up. If you can't disconnect your video transmitter while you're farting around, then always, always have an antenna on it because it can cause damage. And the damage isn't necessarily immediately obvious. It could be that it overheats and it works fine, but a couple of weeks down the track, it just fails for no apparent reason because it's already been overheated previously. So always, always run an antenna if you're going to be running your video transmitter absolutely without any shadow of a doubt. You may get away with it, you may not. Don't take the risk. They're too expensive to burn up all the time. Now I'm going to show you something here which everyone should know about when you're testing out a brand new quad and it's, it's how to avoid flipping it and breaking props on the very first attempt at flight. Okay here's what you do, you've got your transmitter on, it's sitting there quietly, you plug in your multi-rotor, as you do, plug the battery in. With the nase boards and with most controllers it's always a good idea to let them sit for a little while so that everything's got time to initialize if the gyros are being bumped around or the accelerometers are bumped around while it's initializing it can cause it to fly funny. So let it sit, you know, 10 seconds. On the full size nase boards there's a little light that flickers off and on. Wait until that light has stopped flickering before you touch and start moving the multi-rotor or you'll get some funny flight characteristics. It's just the way it is. So now I've got my multi-rotor all set up. What I'm going to do is show you how you can test to make sure the props are on the right, right way, you've got the right ESCs plugged in and the controls are working correctly. It's really simple but a lot of people don't do this and they just break props. Right, here we go. I want you to hold your quad so you're well clear of the props. Hold it underneath. Make sure there's nothing's going to tangle in the props because that's really unfortunate and it can cause some issues. So hold it nice and level, well clear of the props and then if I move around here so I can actually get at my transmitter at the same time, you arm the quad and then just raise the throttle a little bit just to get those props spinning, okay? Now, make sure it's in a self-leveling mode and you'll find that when you tilt it forward it will, it will fight back and when you tilt it left and right it will fight against, against your movements. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm in, there we go. And so if I hold it forward like that, the front motors are spinning really fast until I level it. That way the back motors spin really fast to the left and the left motors, in fact you see the, the right motor, or the left motors have actually stopped. And if I go this way, those motors stop, virtually stop. That's how you check and make sure everything's working the right way. You'll feel it. If you raise the throttle a bit more, that effect becomes even more pronounced. Okay, and then you can also put some roll in. Roll left, roll right, and some pitch, pitch back, pitch forward. So you can feel the controls working. That's really, really handy. So then if it's all going the right way, when you lift off, it's not gonna flip. So there we go, I hope that's helped you with the 
sometimes scary process of setting up a brand new controller board, as I say, the Naze 32s, they're so damn good. They don't need a lot of setting up. Those basic feature commands, they just make sure that it can listen to the receiver in CPM, CPPM mode if you've got the Naze Mini. If you've got the full-size Naze and you want to run the separate channels, you don't need that set PPPM command. You've got the motor stop, that's optional. If you want your motors to spin when you arm it, just don't bother with that command at all. And you've got the uh, servo tilt command, which is really only applicable to the little Naze mini board, so you can use S1 through S4, correspond to ESC1 through to ESC4. I hope you've learned something from the video, and uh, if you've got any questions, of course, as usual, pop them in the, in, the, in the comments, and I'll do my best to respond to them. If you've got comments, pop them in there too, and I shall try and read the whole damn lot of them. I can see there's going to be a demand probably for more videos like this. I'll show you how to set up some of the other features of the Naze board and perhaps how to do things like changing the RC values, which is the responsiveness, because out of the box, they're pretty sedate, pretty mild. The roll rates aren't high, the yaw rates aren't high. Once you've flown it, you're probably going to want a bit more spice out of your Naze board. I'll show you how to do that, and there's two ways to do it. And uh, if you want to do flips and acrobatics, aerobatics, then you, you want to, have to make those rates quite a bit different. Also, PID tuning. Now, the PIDs in both the self-leveling modes, that's the horizon mode and the angle mode, the PIDs out of the box have worked with every frame I've tried them with. Rock solid, just easy to fly, no problems at all. When you get into the rate mode, the acrobatic mode, then you have to start tuning those PIDs. I noticed out of the box with uh, the two minis I've tried it in so far, when you angle it over, it wants, still wants to level slightly, so the PIDs need a bit of tuning to hold it in that angled position. Now, I'm not a great aerobatic flyer, I don't use um, rate mode much at the moment. I will have to for my racing, I've got to learn it, so while I'm learning, I'll help you if I can by giving you some videos on that if you really want to see it. The other thing, other video I, I know a lot of people will want is on the full-size Naze 32 board, the support for the free sky telemetry, so you can hook it up and have your, computer, your transmitter telling you when your battery's low now, at the moment, I'm just using the little FreeSky voltage sensor. Works really well, it's so simple. I'm not using the Naze board's capabilities. And the Naze Mini doesn't have that capability, so only the full Naze board does. So I'll show you how to do that though. If you get a Naze 32 board, then plug it in to the telemetry, and away you go. You can do some really cool stuff. Show you how to do that. Video's coming up. In the meantime, what have I got to do? Um, back to the bench.